Welcome to Ready to Mosh, a podcast all about rock, metal and alternative music. I'm Kev P. And I'm Gem G. Each episode will bring you the latest news, talk about new releases and review gigs and festivals that we've been to. There'll be a smattering of guest interviews and a lot of random chat. As well as podcasts, you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram. Just search at Ready to Moshcast. Hello and welcome to episode 21 of Ready to Mosh. We've got another guest interview this week. And it's a very special one. We've got Katie from Metal for God. Unfortunately, Chris, her other half, couldn't make it, who is also the co-founder of Metal for Good. We had a really, really nice chat with Katie. And yeah, hope you enjoy it. Right, we've got a special episode this week. We have another interview for you. And this week it's with Katie from Metal for Good. How are you doing, Katie? I'm very well, thank you. How are you Well, both? well, thank you. Yes, good, thank you. Well, thank you very much You're, for you're more, than more, than, more than welcome. I suppose... Actually, you need to do the first one, don't you? I've just looked at my notes. Yes, I'm starting this time. You're starting this (laughs) time. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I guess we'll start at the beginning then. So, how did Metal for Good begin? So, we are quite a young charity. So, we are um, a charitable foundation just in the process of becoming registered formally as a charity. But it was a bit of a kind of idea that myself and my husband, Chris, came up with, I have to say, whilst uh, a few drinks in, um, actually, a a couple of gigs and a couple of nights out, we kept talking about this um, kind of idea that we had, which um, really was inspired by the rock and metal, an alternative, like the kind of wide umbrella of of that community, who, you know, we've been knocking around in it for kind of 20, 25 years, and just have always felt that it is just the loveliest bunch of people who have some incredible values and demonstrate really, really incredible kind of behaviours when we're all together at festivals and events and gigs. And we thought, how could we capture that and do something really interesting with it that could have a wider impact for the community? And um, so we started playing around with this idea of, of metal for good. How could we turn what's so great about our community into something that has a, a benefit? So, yeah, we came up with this idea, which is a charitable foundation. That So we want to raise money from the community, from the artists, from the brands and organisations that, you know, kind of benefit from the loyalty of our community to then give out to um, awesome community projects, charities, organisations that are changing lives using music. So, yeah, so it started over a few pints and escalated somewhat quickly from there. But we we found quite quickly, you know, not just from, you know, convincing each other that it was a good idea, but from talking to other people that it felt like there was a bit of a, a gap for something like this, that the rock and metal community could really get behind a, a charity or an idea that, you know, just kind of really shouts about how great we all are, basically. <laughs> yeah, so, so I've, I've been having a, a look around on the site as well. So obviously uh, you've kind of gone through, you know, how it kind of started and everything. I suppose what kind of things are you sort of try to get behind on this? So what kind of projects are you uh, sort of working on at the moment? And um, the kind of the the main aim and the kind of first, I guess, big goal is to raise enough funding to be able to launch a grant funding round, which we will then open up to a whole range of community, like I say, projects or charities or organisations. But we really specifically want to support projects that are using music to do four kind of key themes, I guess. So projects that use music to um, improve education for young people. So, you know, innovative projects that are just, you know, kind of, I guess, addressing the needs of young people across the UK. We all know that, you know, not everyone has a great time in school and and music is a really good tool to engage young people and to, to build their confidence and raise their aspirations. We also want to work with projects who similarly use music to help people find employment. So, again, you know, kind of using music as a tool to build confidence, improve skills, you know, provide mentoring or work experience. So, um, again, kind of uh, music is this tool for social change. And this is kind of a key theme. And then a big one, which I think resonates with a lot of the community, is how music can improve well-being. So physical, mental well-being 
we know music is so important as a coping mechanism for so many of us. Um, but there are some great projects and organisations out there that are doing this every day and need support to kind of grow what they're doing or test new things. So music for kind of positive well-being, And then finally, using music to address inequalities. And that might be the one that is a bit more inward looking to our community. You know, we all know that we need to see more diversity on our festival lineups, more diversity within the industry as a whole. So, you know, projects and organisations that are running great um, initiatives to, you know, kind of break down some of those barriers for marginalised groups. So we're not at the moment supporting a specific project. We're kind of raising the funding to then hopefully in spring next year, early next year, be able to open our first grant funding round, which will be open to any UK charity community organisation to apply for. Okay. And so you mentioned that you are kind of a relatively young charity. How long have you actually been around and how have you been kind of growing so far in terms of things like social media presence? We're probably only kind of six months into this being, you know, more than just a a conversation in the pub. Um, So, you know, we are really young, um, but we're building momentum Mm -hmm. quite quickly, it feels. And I think that that's been really heartening to us that when we're talking to people, they're getting it and that it's something that resonates with the rock and metal community because they see those values that we talk about and how important they are to the community. So, We're young, but we're growing quickly. And, you know, in terms of social media, we're we're not huge, but we're having some really exciting conversations at the moment that I can't (laughs) talk about. But with, um, I know, I know, really frustrating, but with some, you know, people like big festivals, kind of corporates and brands in the industry who have shown a real interest and want to work with us kind of radio stations who have seen, you know, kind of how they could support us and help us grow our profile and raise money. So some of those things we hope to be able to announce really soon. And we kind of see that as a real platform to be able to grow our social media presence. But then, you know, just the engagement we're having with people who are following us, they're all like, yes, I, you know, I totally get it. We're missing this. This is something that we really recognize. And kind of we're, we've built Metal for Good around five values. And they're values that we recognise, but when we're talking to people, we're kind of getting that validation that they really are, I think, reflective of the rock and metal community. Um, And their togetherness, so that sense of, you know, when you're at a gig and you're looking round, everyone is there for the same reason, you know, everyone's singing those lyrics and you just feel, you know, it's a really special moment. There's individuality, so even though we're all together for the same reason you're free to express your individuality and you can wear what you want and look however you want and and that's absolutely fine and you feel safe to do so and accepted passion so you know the music obviously we all love the music and you know passion is something that is demonstrated all the time in terms of people's following of artists and bands And then integrity. So, you know, that idea of no person down in the mosh pit. People look after each other at these festivals. I'm not long. I'm not sure if you guys were there. Yeah, we were there. You know, it was. Yeah, yeah, I thought you were. I thought you were. You know, a a great event. Hot (laughs) as hell. Hotter than the sun. But, you know, people really did look out for each other because we had to. But I think that applies at any festival that you go to under that kind of rock and metal community. Um, And then the final one is belonging. And, you know, that kind of sense that you walk through the gates of Bloodstock or Download or wherever it is, and you feel like you're home. So those kind of values are really important for us. And when we've talked about those values on social media in particular, people really resonate with those and, and kind of we've had a lot of engagement um, in terms of how what we hope are, you know, really spot on in terms of reflecting the community. Yeah, and I saw that you were trying to get 666 followers on Instagram. So I think you're nearly yes. there now. Hopefully by the time this goes out. Oh, nice. I know we've got yeah. about 20 or I know we had um, we were getting like some really good momentum and then we've had a few weeks kind of offline just to you know we've had family holiday and, and actually just a bit of downtime because it's been really full on so um, I need to kind of get back out there and encouraging people to like and follow the page so we can get to that 666 because you know that's the milestone everyone oh, absolutely. Yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, after 555, we did 555, now we're 666. (laughs) Uh, So what kind of challenges have you faced so far? Um, I think a challenge actually has been engaging with kind of artists and bands in particular. So, you know, I think not unexpectedly, 
there's gatekeepers kind of in the industry. So they all have agents and management and they all get spammed on, you know, their social media channels all the time. And, you know, I think it's just breaking through that noise. And we, we're really lucky to have had some people very firmly in the industry who are making introductions now to various artists directly or to their management directly. And that that is helping that we are now starting to get some traction because we really want to have this to be like almost like a, a bottom up and top down approach. So, you know, we want the community to get behind us and fundraise, but we also want up and coming artists to help us raise our profile and talk about what we're doing, as well as those ones sitting on piles of money to, you know, hopefully donate directly. But yeah, getting through the door, I think, of some of those artists. So if any of your listeners have got ways into, you know, kind of bands, artists, uh, management, record labels, whoever it is, you know, I think that a, a kind of warm introduction is 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 really helpful because they just get so many emails and so much contact and and it's funny the ones that you really want are the ones that are really socially minded and talk about social issues all the time so those you know there's a few obvious bands that probably spring to mind people like Anta yeah. Shikari you know really socially minded but everyone wants yeah. them as charity <laughs> ambassadors or everyone wants and of course, that's that's the problem, you know. So it's it's how we get that balance of an artist or a band who I think would get us and would really help raise our profile and potentially help our fundraising target, but that aren't already getting bombarded by twenty requests a week from a, another charity. So yeah, that's probably been a big challenge to start with, and then just time yeah. because. You know, I work full time and my <laughs> husband works full time. We've got a four year old son. You know, we, you know, it's just trying to fit it all in because it has absolutely kind of built some momentum quite quickly and it does seem to be snowballing. So it's just how we keep on top of that momentum and don't lose yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's always a tricky thing. And like you say, trying to get through that wall as well is just, and with, with the time that you can yes. kind of really dedicate. So it's, it's just so difficult. Yeah. Yeah, you guys must have exactly the same yeah, challenge, yeah. you know, in terms we've, of wanting we've been to lucky, get people. Uh, we've been lucky a couple of times, but yeah. yeah, it is it is about trying to get through that through that wall and kind of getting people to take notice, I suppose. Absolutely, and it is sometimes just a bit of luck that it you is, talk to yeah. the right person at the right yeah, time. We, we, we've been very lucky, and then it opens up doors. Yeah, yeah. No, similarly, we've we've had a, a few very fortunate kind of introductions or conversations and just actually a few kind of cold emails that come through from people who are really well connected but uh yeah when you're plugging away trying to email and dm kind of people constantly and you're getting nothing that can be frustrating as you well know (laughs) okay so in terms of the projects that you're looking at working on or are working on you've obviously emphasized in things like well-being Mm -hmm. education employment have you had any particular positive stories so far or positive outcomes from it well no because we're um you know because we are at that kind of early stage we are we are talking Mm -hmm. to projects so we've definitely kind of gone out and looked at because obviously we needed to prove that this was a model that could work and that there are great projects and charities out there using music and and there are loads and I'm sure there are more that want to try other things you know to see how music could be a tool for addressing kind of different challenges in society so we we've done some kind of kind of I guess market research and we've gone out there and looked at who is out there and who's doing great stuff and we've spoken to a number of them to kind of get a sense of the types of work they're doing in the community and whether the kind of grant funding that we hope to offer would be useful to them and you know Thankfully, it it seems to be something that is really needed. There isn't a grant funder out there who's kind of really just focused on music for social change. There's some great, you know, organisations doing stuff around music therapy and and various other things. But I I think that this music for social change is, is not something that lots of, well, there isn't certainly a single charity that's just focused on that. So you know, the kind of projects we'd, we'd love to work with. We've spoken to the guys over at Heavy Metal Therapy. I'm sure you're kind of um, aware of them from social media. And they've got this great community of people who struggle with their mental health and this kind of peer support that those individuals give each other through this kind of love and passion for heavy music. It would be great to support someone like them. They've they're kind of been going for a while, but are quite small and struggle to scale. You know, even people like the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, the work that they're doing to address inequalities, we see them as a, a really great project that that kind of fit into that funding theme and one that I, I think we'd love to support. And, you know, we feel like there's room for everyone and 
you know, Sophie is such an important charity. And if we could support them, that would be fantastic. But there are some great projects out there that are doing work specifically with women getting into the music industry. So there's, uh, I can't remember the name of them, so apologies, but there's a great scheme that Skunk and Nancy actually got behind and Skin's a real champion for. And they provided a mentor and work experience for women who were trying to break into the kind of behind the scenes stuff in the industry. So, you know, kind of production crew sound. So those kinds of projects, I think, would be absolutely right up our street in terms of both creating employment opportunities and addressing inequalities. And then there's stuff like a really, really great community charity in London called Girls Rock. And they provide lots of kind of youth projects for young women in the local area, quite a kind of socio-economically disadvantaged area. Um, And yeah, so they provide them with opportunity to come and learn instruments, learn how to produce music, all of that kind of stuff. And again, I think that kind of young person education angle, someone like that would be fantastic to support. So we're having lots of these conversations at the moment with a hope that we'll be in a position in the quite near future to actually put our money where our mouth is and give them some grant funding to help them increase their impact or do lots of other great stuff. Excellent. So I suppose what's the reaction been from the public and does it differ across generations? Um, Do you know what's been great is that We've not really found there has been a a huge difference. I'd probably say, in fairness, if I reflected on it, being of someone in kind of late 30s myself, like we probably not engaged with that many people younger. And we really do want to engage with the younger um, rock and metal community. There's a huge community on TikTok that I know we need to kind of get involved with. Um, so I think kind of everyone from their kind of 30s upwards, almost the exclusively everyone we've spoken to has really loved what we want to do and see that there is a bit of a gap for this kind of um, charity that the rock and metal community could get behind and get how the values fit into it and how music can be a really powerful tool to change lives. So it's been overwhelmingly positive. And I, and I think the challenge now is how do we perhaps work with individuals or artists that are really tapping into that younger audience because I'm I'm not relevant to them, but there are some great artists and influencers and brands who are absolutely relevant to that community. And the younger community are more socially minded than ever, than probably other generations. So I think it's just how we how we get access to them almost and how we just make it really relevant to them because I think you know, hopefully what we're trying to do is just as important to them as it is to a 30, 40, 50 yeah. year old. So, so yeah, that's great, but we've got more to do, I think, in terms of engaging everyone. Okay. So you mentioned that you were at Download on Bloodstock this year. Have you been out about at any other festivals? Yeah. Not rock and metal festivals. We, we did do a, a really lovely family festival the other uh, weekend, which was great. But no, I mean, honestly, they were probably <laughs> enough. <laughs> just mentioned my age. <laughs> kind of four four odd days uh um at those two big ones and you know bloodstock was really hard work just because of the heat and it took me a good week or two to recover from it um so no we didn't make it to any others uh funds also don't don't really allow more you know kind of after those two two biggies but next year we really want to be at events at the festival circuit you know, across all of the festivals. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, we're having some really exciting conversations with some of um, those festival organisers and promoters. And I really hope that you'll see us alongside the Sophie Tent, you know, alongside some of the other charities there. We'll have our own stand. You can come and talk to us, buy our merch. That's another kind of way that we want to raise income. You know, what rock and metal fan doesn't like merch? So, you know, we've kind of jumped on that bandwagon, but we're kind of talking about some exciting collaborations for our merch to to make it a bit more exclusive but you can as it stands kind of go and buy our you know kind of branded stuff and that's been really great we've had some you know quite a lot of interest not huge huge sales you know compared to obviously you know other kind of people selling merch but it's been great that people are buying it and they do want to represent metal for good and get people talking about it through what they're wearing But yeah, next year, I suspect you'll see us at many more. You guys have been to loads, though. Yeah, we've done four this year, I think. 
Mm. Which is a record. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's quite a record. I think the most we'd done before that was two in a year. Yeah. Wasn't it? Uh, but yeah, we, we did four this year, yeah. which is, it was exhausting. <laughs> mm. Well, there are a couple of only smaller ones, weren't they? So yeah, they weren't um, quite so much hard work. But yeah, like you say, Bloodstock really yeah. was hard work. <laughs> it, it was an effort. <laughs> it was an effort. Mm. A great weekend, like fantastic weekend. But uh, it just, just moving yeah. was hard work. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. Very energy <laughs> stuff. Oh, it really, really was. It was. And you guys were at Download. We were, yeah, we were at Download too, which I, I think was a little bit cooler, a little bit cooler at Download, but still... You know, if, if I'd have come away from the year with just that one being warm, I'd have gone, oh, wow, we've had a warm download. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was dreaming of the, you know, the slightly overcast weather that we had at download during yeah. the Bloodstock weekend, thinking, why why didn't I appreciate this weather a little bit more? <laughs> Should we move on to the quick fire, Andy? Um, yeah, can do. Okay, if you're ready for it. If you're ready for the quick fire round. Oh, I don't know. So I don't know. Don't don't think too much about the questions. Uh, just kind of okay. come with your whatever whatever your instinct is. First question is: What was the first album you owned? Oh God, it was something embarrassing, like Naked <laughs> on the Block or something. Very very uncool, but shows my age. Mine was yeah. Kylie. If that makes you feel any better. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think my second one was probably Kylie. Oh, did Kylie and Jason do an album? Mm. It was it definitely yeah. something to do with Kylie and Jason. I'm yeah. the cool one. Late late nineties. <laughs> uh, Appetite for destruction. Oh, yeah. I'm showing my age. I don't want to get me. <laughs> um, okay, so what would be your death row meal? So you get to pick a starter, a main, a pudding, and a drink. Oh, that's a really good question. Okay, so. Starter would be something probably like scallops or yeah. something like seafood. Really, but what's interesting is that since January we've been vegan, so we tried veganuary and we've carried it on. So, I, but if it was a death row meal, then I think <laughs> I would, you know, kind of go back on the veganism because you know you, one you, last. You've got to go all out. Um. So yeah, it would be exactly no you've got to you've got to so it'd be something seafoody scallops prawns something like that I think would be really nice a main meal would be I think a really good really good curry like a really good maybe Thai Ooh. curry love Thai food like a Massaman mm. curry something like that 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 would definitely be up there so start a main dessert, yep, dessert. Did you say as well dessert would be Okay, probably something really uninspiring, like a melted chocolate, like pudding bomb kind of thing. Lots of chocolate, very rich, not with custard, can't stand custard. So it'd have to have some kind of really nice vanilla ice cream on the side, but something very chocolatey, but very unoriginal as well. This is actually turning into my, my favourite one so far that we've done of these. Yeah. Hey, really? <laughs> make it, I've just eaten, but I want to eat again now. <laughs> and what about your drink yeah. what would your drink be drink mm. drink would be pro- probably again quite unoriginal but a really really nice pint of like a, a a kind of really crafty ale like it would have to be almost like an a an apa type thing but a really really nice crafty beer I, I, yeah I, I love your meal so, yeah, nice. and i've just eaten <laughs> There you go. Good. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I've not long had a huge dinner, so I don't know where I pulled that out of because I really don't feel like eating at all. <laughs> and what was the first gig that you went to? OK, so the first like proper gig I went to that wasn't just maybe a mate's band was um, the Big Day Out in 1999. It was at the Milton Keynes Bowl and it was headlined by Metallica and supported by, I think, like there was Marilyn Manson and Placebo and various other kind of of the time, I would say, uh, kind of bands. I was about 15 and I went with some friends and I have no idea how or why my mum let me go <laughs> by myself. Like, I think she was just completely ignorant to the fact that I was going to like a, a one day rock festival, basically. But I had the best time. I did lose my shoes in the mosh pit. So I spent all of Metallica without any shoes on but yeah it was amazing fantastic and from that moment on kind of hooked on festivals and going to see rock and metal bands and uh, yeah that was probably the start of it in terms of that experience of going to a proper proper gig and um, yeah it was yeah, amazing it's a good one to start with <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a really really good one that 
Well, I, I grew up in like very rural mid Wales. So if you were going to go to a big event, like you, you had to make a big deal of it. You couldn't like prior to that, there was nowhere that I could just go like in a, yeah. a city, you know, if you've got an academy or an institute and you can just go to a gig. So it was kind of a big adventure that we went on, me and some mates uh, from school. But yeah, I mean, it was very cool. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah. And always remember it. What are your favourite crisps? Uh, favorite crisps, paprika Pringles. That's an unusual choice. Not, not many people go down to Pringles. Really. <laughs> I think what it is is that um, there are crisps that we always buy if we're on holiday. It's like somewhere abroad. You can yeah. generally not find them in the UK very often, mm. but you can find them in like if you're in Spain or Greece or wherever, like on the mainland, you can generally always buy paprika Pringles. They kind of remind me of like sitting, having a drink on holiday and stuffing my face with paprika paprika Pringles, which is uh, not very easy to say. Um, so yeah, random, but there's a reason behind it, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the Pringles, so yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, what would be your dream tour lineup? So you can have a headliner and then maybe two or three support acts and they can be dead or alive. Okay, cool. So I'd say, do you know what? Funnily enough, one of my favourite bands are Killswitch Engage. So I was very excited about the Bloodstock announcement yep. next year. Already got our tickets. So I think Killswitch Engage have probably got to be there. Also really, really love Avenged Sevenfold. So maybe Avenged, Killswitch. But then probably just to go completely uh, left field, I'd probably want someone like Fleetwood Mac okay. because also... Who doesn't love Fleetwood Mac? Well, you might not, but lots of people love Fleetwood Mac. I love them. So, yeah, I'd have someone random like Fleetwood Mac. I mean, I think the crowd would be interesting, but um, I'd certainly enjoy it. It would be a good mix. <laughs> yeah, it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, so if you've got that lineup, um, what would your pre gig drink be? Yeah, my pre drink? Um, probably a Long Island iced tea. Mm. Mm. That's, a, that, that's a bit of a curveball there I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that <laughs> it's got all well, the booze yeah, in it that is true. <laughs> tastes just like uh, alcoholic coca-cola so yeah um it's a great great pre drink although probably quite dangerous <laughs> if you have more than one what biscuit would you be what biscuit would i be um maybe something like a, a sturdy hobnob i think isn't that like a peter k joke yes. when he, you know talks about dunking yeah. biscuits but <laughs> I think I'm quite scrappy, quite robust, quite sturdy, uh, quite thick skinned. So maybe a hobnob. Also, they're really, really tasty. So um, yeah, yes. obviously, yeah. Obviously, oh. because they're the best. They're the best. for me, that's the king of the biscuits. <laughs> yeah, it's always our festival biscuit. It's as well, a festival isn't it? we biscuit. We always take yeah. a packet of hobnobs to a festival, yes. not to bloodstock. It's the oats and energy. No. Yeah. And last one in the quick fire round. What was the last song you listened to? The last song I listened to. That's, oh gosh, I can't even remember. I had the radio on earlier. I'm trying to think what was on there. I think, and it, I it was probably the only one that I actively listened to because I was uh, cooking dinner at the same time. Was Machine Head's new uh-huh. single? Is it yeah. Unhallowed? So I think, yeah. So I think I was kind of in, in the back of my mind. I was like, oh, this is the Machine Head song. This is good. Um, so yeah, that's possibly the last. Conscious, conscious yeah. song that I've, I was listening to. Conscious song. Sing, that's the wrong way around. Uh, listening to consciously. There you go. <laughs> cool. Okay, so you've mentioned a few things that you've got kind of coming up for next year, but obviously some of it is secret. Have you got anything that you can share in terms of where you might be out and about promoting things? Yeah, so a couple of things that are kind of coming up. We um, were hoping to be hosting a kind of charity auction later in the year. It's an online auction, obviously, but we're hoping to have some really exciting merch and signed kind of memorabilia, instruments, uh, some hopefully from some really exciting artists. So um, uh, watch this space for that. We'll be uh, kind of sharing some more details about that, but we hope that to be kind of November time. We'd love people to get behind it. There might be some auctions or it might be more like a raffle. So kind of a bit more accessible for everybody if you don't have a couple of grand to bid on a kind of signed guitar. But yeah, so there'll be a few options and a few ways that people can get involved. So that will definitely be happening. We we chat quite well. We're, we're working quite closely with Primordial Radio, so they're kind of great guys over there. 
We'll be at the Big Bang, which is a, an event they're kind of putting on in a few weeks' time. So we'll definitely be there and, and watch this space for kind of other stuff that we're going to be doing with them, hopefully in the near future. And then, yeah, kind of really more of the same in terms of kind of more merch. We hope to have some collaborations coming out soon. So that will be um, a way that people can definitely get involved. And then we hope after Christmas we'll be able to announce a bit more about our kind of event calendar next year where you'll definitely be able to see us at festivals but like I say some of them are kind of a bit secret at the moment because they're not you know we haven't kind of crossed the t's and dotted the i's but um yeah we'll be shouting about it obviously as soon as we absolutely can so um yeah really exciting yeah that all sounds good especially the auction or the raffle idea that sounds great yeah um and yeah we've got some pretty cool stuff Mm. lined up so um yeah I, I I hope that we'll get lots of interest from it and um yeah like I say I appreciate that not everyone has got thousands of pounds to bid on a signed guitar so I think we'll we'll kind of broaden it to have some things that people can pay you know kind of a five ten pound raffle ticket and be in a chance to win some really cool stuff so um yeah we'll be no doubt promoting that loads on our social media channels um very soon so on that where can people find out more um you can uh Register for our newsletter, which is on our website, which is um, www.metalforgood, and it's um, for F O R instead of the number. org. We are on Instagram as at Metal for Good, same Facebook Metal for Good, and then Twitter at Metal for Good X because someone else already stole uh, that handle. We'll try and get that back at uh, some point in the future, so you can find out more there. And uh, yeah, sign up for the newsletter. We'll be kind of sending out some further information and ways to get involved. We do have a crowdfunding page going at the moment. Um, So if people are inspired to donate, they absolutely can. But we are waiting for our kind of um, charity commission registration number so we can actually set up a proper just giving donation platform, which means that we'll be able to access things like gift aid. So, you know, if if people want to, that's great. But equally, I think in the future, there'll be lots more opportunities to, to donate. And and actually, if people want to kind of fundraise on our behalf, we are talking to quite a lot of rock societies at universities who are really keen to to support and use their kind of calendar of events and club nights and things to raise money for us. But, you know, if, if people listen to this and think, oh, actually, we could do something, host a band night or raise money for Metal for Good through, you know, something else they're already doing, maybe a, you know, kind of half marathon or 5K, something like that, then they absolutely can. And we can support with those kinds of things, provide you with everything that you you might need in terms of a fundraising pack to make that happen fantastic so make sure you go and check out all of the things that katie's been telling you when the raffle tickets are available purchase the raffle tickets yeah yeah absolutely absolutely it's been great to just uh have the time to talk a little bit more about what we're doing and um share our kind of crazy idea with the world and yeah we're we're happy for people to support and help in in any small or big way that they feel able to so yeah this has been great so thank you cool okay well that wraps things up then so thanks so much for coming on katie and sharing all the great things that you're doing with metal for good and as kev said go and check out what they're doing and sign up for the newsletter and look out for the auction and the things that they'll be doing next year thank you very much both it's been lovely thank you. to chat So that was our chat with Katie from Metal for Good. We hope you enjoyed listening to it. As always, if you did enjoy, then please go and give us a five star review on Spotify. And don't forget to look us up on Instagram and Twitter. We're at Ready to Moshcast and also on YouTube at Ready to Mosh. And of course, go and look up Metal for Good in all the places that Katie mentioned. Give them a follow and give them some support as well. Make it stop, move.